<laughs> when we go boldly into 2019, Woo! not only do we need to prepare ourselves spiritually, listen to his voice, but the third thing is we've got to make a declaration today that we're not going to give in to fear of any sort. Right. We're not giving in to fear. Right. No fear. In fact, you know, as you read this story in the book of Joshua, you don't read if anybody actually saying anything about fear. No, no, no. God had given them faith. And let me tell you something. We are not going to be afraid either. And, you know, can you imagine, though, carrying the Ark of the Covenant? I mean, it was precious to them. And they were marching right down, right down towards that place. And, uh, you know, if they would have just looked at that through natural eyes, it would have been easy for them to have feared. But the scripture says that in Joshua chapter 3, it says, as those, verse 14, it says, as those who bore the ark came to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests who bore the ark dipped in the edge of the water, goes on to say that God divided the waters. Amen? Amen. And let me tell you something. God is not the author of fear. I've been in ministry for many years, and and uh, I, I will tell you, there have been days I've looked at things. And fear has crept into my spirit, right? But but but, but let me tell you, I, I I just know that there's nothing in the kingdom that's done without faith. We've got to have faith. We've got to believe. And we have to remember that the same God who divided the, Jer the Jordan, who knocked down the walls of Jericho, is our God today. And, and you, you may have to deal with fear, but let me tell you something. You, you, you need to, to, to believe the Lord. I want to ask you a question today, every one of you. If you knew that whatever you wanted to do for God in 2019, if you knew that you could not fail, that there is no way that you could fail, that God would provide everything that you needed, what is it that you personally would attempt to do for God? That's a big question. I've asked that question in groups of people. It's astounding. The dreams and the hearts of God's people. That's right. What stops us from doing those things? Fear. Fear. We're afraid of failure. We're afraid of time commitment. We're afraid it might not work out and we might get ridiculed. And let me tell you, Satan is the author of fear. False evidence appearing real. That's what the fear is. Satan can tell you a story in your mind. He can give you all the reasons why. And it sounds so convincing that pretty soon what happens is your soul becomes timid and you and you start losing faith in God. You forget about who God is and you start focusing on that fear. I've got so, I've got something to tell you all today. Come on. And I want you to know I'm playing, playing a little game with you, so just hold on with me today, all right? But I want you to understand that pickles are very bad for you. False evidence appearing real. I'm going to give you an example. Pickles are bad for you. Every they have re, it's the truth. It's a new discovery that they've discovered that pickles cause cancer, communism, airline tragedies, auto accidents, and crime waves. If you eat pickles, if you, I'm telling you, pickles are dangerous. 99.9% .9 of cancer victims have eaten pickles sometime in their lifetime, all right? 96.8% of all communist sympathizers, they ate, they ate pickles as well. And 99.7% of those involved in car accidents or tragedies, uh, air, air tragedies, they've also eaten pickles. I'm just here today to tell you that pickles are dangerous. You need to be afraid of pickles. You with me? Moreover, this is a true. This is an absolutely true statistic. Of people born in 1839. The majority of which ate pickles in their life. The mortality rate has been 100%. I can guarantee you that. They've all died. And rats that you force feed pickles, they end up having bulging abdomens and loss of appetite. I'm just here to tell you that you've got to stay away from pickles. I'm playing like Satan plays. How I many you know pickles are okay? 
Exactly. All right? That's right. Probably shouldn't eat too many of them, but an occasional pickle is good for you. Am I right? Yes. But that's what the enemy does. He'll spin a yarn. He'll try to tell you all of this stuff. He'll, he'll tell you what you're missing. It's what happened to them. And it's what happened to this. And go on and on and on and on to give you all the reasons why it can never work out. Why the job can never work out. Why the business will never take off. Why the ministry is going to fail. Why this is going to happen. Why that's going to happen. Well, I got news for you today. The devil is a liar. Come on. Amen. Yeah. It's time we stand up and believe the Lord. And it's time we make a declaration that we will not give in to any fear. That's right. Amen. No, yeah. fear. No, no fear. No fear. No fear. You know, if you search no fear on the internet for image, you get all these cool, I, I guess there's some kind of a deal about no fear. I don't really know what that is. A hat or I, I don't know what it is. They've taken the God stuff and used it for the enemy is what I say. Because no fear belongs to the people of God first of all. Hello? we got to have no fear in our life. So what I'd like to share with the gospel with my co-workers, no, co-workers, no fear. I'd like to start a new business. No fear. Come on. I'd like to believe God for healing. No fear. Let me tell you something. When you get that down inside of your spirit, hey man, you'll be able to march into 2019 with the victory today. Would you stand with me today? Thank you for letting me just share today. Hey Amen. God is with us today. Amen. Hallelujah. And I just believe that God wants to do something phenomenal through this body of believers. Through you and through me. You say, well, Pastor, we're just ordinary.